Not with that group. Not with that group. That's what I was saying. I was like, why would you have it at a church? I was the first person up. And, um, (laughs) yeah, I'm very balanced in what I do and what I say. But, um, you are. So the mayor was here. I'm sorry. Yeah, the mayor was here and um, the chief was here. And so when I walked in, I sat down. First of all, there were like four or five police cars sitting here when I walked in. I went and sat down and the cops were literally standing on the wall. Mm. And there was like four different cops standing on the wall. And then you have the nation standing at the corners also. So the optics were just, yes, the nation. We have police. I said the, the optics were wrong. It's so wrong. I said we have police officers standing up against the wall. I said it's a disconnect. You don't even get it. Yeah. And I looked right at the chief. I said, Chief, you literally had to get up and go tell them to sit down. Mm. I called him out. Everybody was like, I mean, I'm breathing. I'm like, Oh Lord, I got warrants. I need to pay my. <laughs> <laughs> you know, He's like how outspoken do I want to be tonight? Exactly. And so they were like, Oh, so. And he was the chief was shaking his head, yes. And I said, There's a disconnect. I said, We don't even get it. And then I kept on talking. And um, then, excuse me, I'm not wearing the church. But the old Baptist Negroes are like, Question, question. And I'm like, I'm maybe a minute, minute 10 in, and they're like, Question, question. And I'm like, Oh no. And that, that's how it, so it started with Cassandra Little John shutting up Deborah Jones Bush. Then I'm being yelled at and questioned. And I threw a and I threw a softball to the mayor. Wait, where so, was this? What church was it at? Yeah. New, new Life. New. So it's on people. I, I just know it's on people. What? Yeah. I'm sad I missed it. No. Oh, it was. Nah, I was talking about it. What was it for? Um, the NAACP. Yeah. It was the NAACP Department of Justice. Um, one other organization. The mayor. Um, the chief. The chief. And Tess House, the lawyer for Marquise Jones's family, mm-hmm. um, and a couple other people. And, yeah, so. um, city manager Scully. She showed up late though. So was this a protest or no? It it's was not. It wound up be a protest. No, it was it was a question, question and answer. It wasn't a yeah. comment question and answer. Okay. It was let's yeah. go. And even even um even um uh, Nico Lahood stood up. And he goes like blah 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 blah. And he's talking about grand juries. So, yeah, <laughs> and I said, and I was about to say, Nico, if you weren't pretty, you wouldn't be anything. Seriously. But he is smart. He is a smart guy, you know. But I hope the camera's on <laughs> so, right now. Yes, Nico. If you weren't pretty, <laughs> <laughs> but I told Nico, like straight up, I was like, and so he's talking about, oh, the grand jury. We send the cops the grand jury. And right when he finished, out of turn, I'm like, but we don't need a grand jury. We don't. We don't. And he's like, oh, well, I'll, I'll talk about that later. So what was the conversation about? <laughs> the conversation... It was supposed to be... <laughs> it was supposed to be about... For least, it, the, the conversation was supposed to be around solutions mm-hmm. on police brutality. Okay. Right? It never got there. Because the solution is... See, these are very simple things. Thank you. The union has way too much power. Yes! The union the has way too much power. The, the police, police union has way too much power. They're really the only acceptable union. The only acceptable union in America right now. So They're more powerful mm. than, than even their like. Wait, which union? The police union. Okay, San Antonio police officers union. Which is why I was upset okay. when the man came back. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, I'm just going to keep rolling. And this is no, that's fine. <laughs> I want it to be this. Oh, are you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I know there's a big red light. <laughs> but no, the police, the, the police, and it's. They have too much power. Mm-hmm. So the young man was shot with the broomstick Ooh. two days ago. Okay. Oh, that was in San Antonio. No, that was no, not no. in San Antonio. Oh, okay. It was in Salt Lake City, Utah. Lake. Okay. He's swinging a broomstick, right? Supposedly there's some sort of assault going on in the area. Two other cops were called in. They come around running in on foot. Mm-hmm. And they supposedly tell the kid to drop the stick. He turns around and they shoot him. Mm-hmm. The end. Mm-hmm. He's not in a coma. Nine right? times? Four Eight. times. Oh, okay. Four times. Shout out four times. My buddy said last night it's a two shot minimum. <laughs> right, right. They're shooting to kill. They're shooting to kill. So, so, they, they so sh- this conversation done kind of to find solutions on that specific issue? On police brutality. On police brutality. Yeah, okay. specifically. But the problem is, is that first of all, the DA doesn't have a backbone because the DA wants to be backed by the police officers union mm-hmm. so he can stay in office and possibly run for something later on. That's number one. Okay. Number two is the union. 
the union has way too much power. So rather than, if a cop shoots somebody, they're taken downtown so they can get their story right. If you or me shoot somebody, we're taken downtown, we're automatically charged, we're automatically given bail, and that's it. Only person you talk to is the magistrate. So who do they, who do they bring together that the thought we're gonna bring some sort of solution? All of your law enforcement personnel. And one person okay. under 30 on the, on the board. And then there's Tess, and she may not be under 30. I mean, we have so much more going on with this, one. of course we still have my piece of situation, but now you've got intro. So I mean, it's, it's, it's like, it, every time we turn around, there's another, there's another issue coming up and we're just sweeping under the rug. No one's talking about it. No one is talking about what they did to this child. Well, part of, part of the challenge that I saw the other night was there wasn't a safe space to talk. And you, well, what I've learned, there's a place here in town called Southwest Workers Union, mm -hmm. SWU, yeah. right? And what I've learned from SWU is that there's different ways to communicate and there's different ways to have organizations. And one of the ways you communicate, and hopefully I don't monopolize my time today talking, <laughs> but you go around the circle mm -hmm. and you force, right. you. she talks, she talks, I talk, you talk, mm -hmm. but nobody interrupts. Right. Mm -hmm. And you have to, that's healing. Mm -hmm. Because not only am I forced to listen to what you're saying, but I'm forced to, to take it in exactly. and take it into my, to, to my soul, mm -hmm. to who I am. And at SWU, I mean, at the, at the event the other night, that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. It was because people have, they want to voice themselves. We don't need to, we don't need to be, I don't, let me use I statements. I don't need to be talked <laughs> to, because some people do need to be talked to, right? Yeah. But I don't need to be talked to by a police chief. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, he knows the law, but he puts his pants on one leg at a time. Thank you. I don't need to be lectured by the mayor, yeah. you know? Yeah, no, it makes sense. But I guess you'd have to have some sort of policy enforcer there. But I see the same thing. Like you don't really need to have police there, especially not. I don't know. Maybe two at max. So when did end up getting talked about then? Nothing. Okay. I mean, they talked about the grand Were jury process. I've, I've read five read? articles. Oh, yeah. So talked about the <laughs> yesterday. Uh, um, oh. Last week. Yeah. Thursday. Thursday. Oh, okay. Yeah. Talked about the grand jury process. Um, that was really about it. You know, Grant, Marquise's lawyer and, or the Jones family lawyer and um, Nico basically went back and forth. The DOJ guy talked for a couple of minutes and he even sat down and said, we need to listen to more of the people here. And they didn't even hear that comment. They didn't even hear him say that when he said it. So we, we, there is a problem with economically underserved communities in our country. That, we want to talk about anything else. Police come into economic. So what is everyone doing then? I mean, because there's like a bunch of nonprofits, right? And there's a bunch of um, there's police, there's a bunch of churches. So I mean, if the issue is just like making things better, what is what are the people who are like there to make things better? Are they doing anything to make things better, or is everything just about? I don't think what he talked about. I don't think people. I don't think people think a lot, think enough about um, how geography affects your society mm. it's like one of it's actually one of the biggest things mm. and people just I don't think people, there are people that do a lot about that that try to um, um, because that okay that is such a socialist mindset right mm. that whole equalizing uh, of your community and bringing you know businesses like we're, we're we live in a private society mm. so that kind of change is very hard to affect mm. in the US um, you can't control where businesses are going to set up they're, if they're, they're going to have a better market up north, that's where they're going to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Whole Foods isn't going to come to the east side. Why would they do that? Like, what is, what do you yeah. think? Yeah. Because you, well, okay. even though the hill is done. Because you take a chance. Because you take a chance. Mm -hmm. See, as a small business owner, if we say, hey, we want to go open on the east side, we're taking a chance. Mm -hmm. So, well, that's done. Well, how do you start the ball rolling? Mm -hmm. If everybody's telling you yeah, you're done. Yeah, everybody's telling you you're dumb. Banks are telling you you're dumb. Your friends are telling you you're dumb. Your family's telling you you're dumb. Mm -hmm. Then who believes in you? Mm -hmm. So Whole Foods could come and open up a little small shop and use the buying power because they're what, three Whole Foods in San Antonio? Two Whole Foods in San Antonio? So they have the buying power. That's not the problem. The problem is they don't want to do it because they don't look at black and brown faces as their target customer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there's not black and brown people running the marketing, running the advertising, or anything else. Right. Definitely. Right. 
So who does view black and brown people as their target? Because there's stores that McDonald's. I mean, even more than that. <laughs> I'll give you stores. Mm-hmm. I mean, your car lots. Mm-hmm. I mean, we are your greatest consumers. We're the, our greatest consumption is of the materialistic, right? The Jordans, the Nikes, the mm-hmm. cars, the yeah, the you know. Uh, the, the coach bags, all those things, those material things, mm-hmm. are those those folks are the ones who target us mm-hmm. because they know that we're gonna uh, consume. But when it comes to <laughs> when it comes to like you were saying with the environment, when it comes to water, uh, when it comes to food deserts, when it comes to uh, air, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, even with the Kelly Air Force Base area, a lot of people are not talking about the left side and how that area. Um, has a huge water issue and has long had a huge water issue and we don't talk about it because it's not gotten to the level of the Flint or mm-hmm. what happened in West Virginia uh, last year when my family couldn't drink any of the water. Um, but it's the same sort of thing and we're waiting until the last minute. It's that, it's that elephant in the room. Mm-hmm. You know? But most people like this stuff, so. <laughs> <laughs> and that's part of what I'm trying to do in the season kind of match folklore is get us back into us and be able to understand that the appropriation, you know, it is is American. Mm-hmm. Right? But, but it's it's American all the way down to, to chitlins and Thank collard you. grains. That's not African. That's mm-hmm. not Thank culture. You. That is the scraps that were given up to us by the by the slave owners. Mm-hmm. And we appropriated that. Exactly. To a certain extent though, right? No. I mean, I mean, that's true, but almost everybody. <laughs> that's not that's exactly no. But if you think of even like, okay, and I might be wildly wrong, but I'm going to try to use some examples. But like, even <laughs> things that are like popular foods, like most Asian food, that's like popular But food. that's popular most, food. Mm-hmm. But I mean, most popular food is was at one time poor people food. You know, like pizza. Like, it was like original poor people food. Like, was pizza poor people food? I mean, it was just like street food. food. Uh, yeah, like yeah. Burger is definitely <laughs> poor people food. Like potato, anything made with potato. Oh, we're saying, are we, <laughs> yeah, what are we saying? Is it poor? So, so the, the main problem is uh, <laughs> culture and money. A lack of culture and then a lack of businesses in the areas. For the east side? For all of the sides that are. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know. I think when you're when you're trying to narrow down what the what the real issue is, when you when you look at the systemic problems and you look at all the other levels of you know stratification, you know, socioeconomic, uh, racial, uh, religious, gender, uh, right, all these things that are continuums, they're, they're spectrums, they're not binaries anymore, right? They just mm-hmm. they can go any direction and they can go infin- infinitely, right? When you're looking at all these problems, I think that what happens is is that um, we lose sight of the fact that what you suffer from was created on your behalf. Explain. The self-fulfilling prophecy, we're talking, you know, econ, poli sci, one-on-one, basically. There's a such thing as a self-fulfilling prophecy. There's a such thing as when you get into your car, it's not a coincidence, basically, that you can fit five people in there. Four adults and a kid. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. When you go home, it's there's a reason why that table that you bought mm-hmm. could fit four people, mm-hmm. and one more if you had to get. Mm-hmm. So what I'm saying is that when you look at the structuralism, mm-hmm. right, of the environment, mm-hmm. of you not having access yeah. to food deserts, of you not having access to public transportation, mm-hmm. of you not having access to playgrounds mm-hmm. other than a soccer field. These structural things determine really mm-hmm. what your success can be, what it uh, could be, mm-hmm. and what it will likely be. And if I continue to give you structure and structure and structure, and mm-hmm. I keep you within this structure, you will act as accordingly. Mm-hmm. So yes, that was such a perfect process. way of describing social constructs. <laughs> that was just amazing. <laughs> because, it because it's something to use examples like that are something that people can now relate to. Because when you try to explain to people that, okay, you grow up hearing this and thinking this, and that's what creates this, people don't relate to that if they're not part of that group or have grown up that way. Mm-hmm. But using that example was just, I think, brilliant. 
yeah, I mean, that's exactly it. You're born into the circumstance, and... And yes, dictated. and yes, you do have choice. Mm -hmm. Don't don't get it twisted. Yeah, we do have choice. But it's there's a direction. But you're being directed. You 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 are being directed. You're taking arts out of school now. Mm -hmm. The more arts you have in school, the more creative people are. The more creative people are, the more smarter people are. Mm -hmm. Right. So instead of teaching kids how to use, excuse me, instead of teaching people how to build a cell phone, or instead of teaching kids how to build Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, we teach them how to use PowerPoint, Microsoft PowerPoint, and Excel. Mm -hmm. Because the more you can direct people to do mm -hmm. stuff, the more you can feed them and feed them <laughs> um, <laughs> ideas on how to buy more stuff. Mm -hmm. I had this conversation with Luana. And I think something else that you said, um, well, I mean, you're basically saying that the system is created intentionally and I kind of want to know if you think uh, with everyone here events, because especially when you get into like awareness movements, mm -hmm. you're sometimes it can feel like you're choosing an enemy. I know some people are and some people aren't, and some people are saying the enemy is the problem. Mm -hmm. um, where do you guys stand on that? Now, if it's intentional, is there is it intentional so much so like everyone else in the world is better just at looking after themselves? And we're not really thinking about it, and so we're not being intentional about our own communities. Or is it that we're under attack, um, literally, from? I'm not picking one or the other. I don't, <laughs> don't want to yeah, feel like I'm from that. It's economics, and, and, it, and it's it's economics at its very core, right? Because in order for us to have a capitalist society, we have mm -hmm. to have unemployment. Mm -hmm. It's written in the definition of capitalism, right? Mm -hmm. You cannot have capitalism. Capitalism feeds itself off of top consumption, mm -hmm. right? I'm constantly consuming something, whether it be venture capitalism, so now I'm doing intangibles because there's no more tangibles. I'm always <laughs> consuming something, right? Mm -hmm. That's the whole point, is to continue to, to gather mm -hmm. mass civilization. This is why you don't have any farms anymore because the corporation's coming in and buying it all up, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that, but that's how capitalism breeds. Mm. It reproduces in mass. So in order for you to have as a, a capitalist country that is what we are today, mm -hmm. you have to have things in place to keep access mm -hmm. inaccessible. Because mm -hmm. when it's accessible, that means that you've got a lot of infighting. Because now you've got those that one percent now has more competition. Mm -hmm. Now there's there's more aristocrats that are emerging. There's more new money, right? There's more Oprahs emerging. There's more. Uh, uh, Elon Musk, mm -hmm. you know, there's more of these these geniuses who are coming out and they're making it, mm -hmm. but there's still new money. And what they can do, what their impact is, mm -hmm. is already decimated, right? Because of old money. And because of old money saying, I've already had this pie slice. I'll give you a crumb, or I might even give you a fraction of mine. Mm -hmm. But don't think you're going to come and sit at my table. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. But that's where you have something like Facebook that becomes an outlier too. So the, the, the intended consequence of Facebook was a slam book for colleges. Mm -hmm. The under, unintended, unintentional consequences of Facebook is the number one media source online that cannot be controlled. Mm -hmm. But they still found ways to control it because you got this board of directors, which is the old money pie that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And Zuckerberg's only going to get enough. Remember Facebook three years ago? I used to be able to see somebody that did not agree with me, I could argue all day long and see all these crazy people come across my timeline. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody looks like me, everybody <laughs> talks like me, it's a, it's a sounding board. Mm -hmm. And we're saying the same things. Yeah. Because... I noticed that know, too, when Facebook first came up, it was, it was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. I think it's because it was so new, I think now it's become, everyone's really conscious of the fact that there's like rules and stuff like that, <laughs> and so it's become almost like anything else. Um, and you kind of stay within your bounds, or you just get really. And when and, uh, when they started having like public advertising on it, too, mm. that also changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they were like targeting what right. you like to see, what you want to see. And then there's only so many things that you can target. Yeah. There's only so many things that advertisers want to see and don't want to see. Mm -hmm. The the biggest, I mean, you said, it un, is it intentional? Yeah. I don't think it's intentional. Unintentionally intentional. I, it, 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 perfectly perfect, right? Mm -hmm. It, yeah, it's it's unintentionally intended. Mm -hmm. I, what we have is we have we have broken systems. Mm -hmm. I would argue that all of our systems in our country are broken, mm -hmm. right? We talk about freedom. 
right? But you have to wear seatbelts in your car. We talk about freedom, but you want the baby to be born at four months, but who's going to pay for the baby that needs life care for the rest because their lungs weren't properly developed or their heart wasn't properly developed, so now they're on life support systems. So then you have a family that's in, in poverty their entire life. We talk about um, choice, but yet you want a woman to have a child, but you also want to kill somebody because you don't agree with who they are. Mm -hmm. We talk about choice, but what choice do we really have? It's, it's a, it, I, I think it's a, it's a fallacy to have that we have all this choice because we have people, if it was, this is my body. Mm -hmm. This is, you need 100% dominion over your yes. body to make my choices and make, I want to make my choices with my body on how I want to live my life. Yes. Well, somebody says, well, until it stumbles on me, well, guns stumble on me all the time, right. right? So is it intentional? I think that we're learning broken systems and people are being taught by the same broken systems and the broken teachers, and all we keep on doing is putting duct tape on. I don't know, I've always been a Christian, like really in my own way, even when I hang out with Christians, I'm like, yeah, sure. Like, I mean, not yeah, sure. I mean, I know we're working on something together, but I know that my belief is different than yours. Because I hear you talk, and it's like I know that I'm different, and it's okay because I think we're still working on the same stuff. But I think, um, and that's not really the, I don't want to drive too much on it, but I think it can be something that connects you. Because um, I think it, I think it's something that's that should be colorless, and I think that. Um, but why can't human be what connects us? Mm -hmm. Well, because I I believe basically this. I, I think that what Jesus more or less. Kind of brings into my life is an understanding of the world that I think is clearer than one that I had without it. If that makes sense. So I feel like it gives me um, a platform for understanding people in a way that is supernatural, that is beyond human. I feel like it allows me to understand something about humanity and humans that is otherwise unattainable. But I, I don't even know why I put a butt on there because I just. I, I didn't want to drive too heavy on it because I don't think it's... Well, I, I, I think the conversation becomes, what does it mean to be human? Mm -hmm. What does it mean to be a, a, a disciple mm -hmm. or a follower of Jesus mm -hmm. or Muhammad mm -hmm. or Buddha or whoever else? Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> so what does that mean? What, mm -hmm. what does it... Again, it's, it's something to separate people. Mm -hmm. You... And you say you have a better understanding of people because of a supernatural understanding because mm -hmm. of a being that you believe in. Well, I believe in love. Mm -hmm. End of story. Mm -hmm. End of story. Because I think that we're all born that way. Yeah. I think we're all born with love. You can't, you can't, nobody can give, in my opinion, nobody can give me anything more than love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking the, the lovey dovey ooh baby. I'm talking, yo. Mm -hmm. I love you, man. Do you need something? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My idea is I didn't say I'm going to charge you $75 an hour, you know, mm -hmm. to help you do something. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that because you were Christian. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that because I thought you might be Mormon one day. That didn't even cross my mind. Mm -hmm. And so why do we put those barriers up with each other? Even when I met this young lady the other night, it was so funny because I'm like looking at it, it was dark outside. Mm -hmm. And I was like, is she nice? <laughs> is she Caribbean? What? And I'm like, so I asked this stupid question, and she's like, I'm none of them. And I'm like, oh. And then she's like, I'm, I said, I'm, I'm black. And I'm like, so you consider yourself black? And she's like, yeah. I said, but not African American. She's like, no, I'm not African American. <laughs> well, actually, I didn't say I was black. I said I was Canadian. Canadian, yeah, right, right. But or a child of the soft. Americas is what my dad says. A child of the Americas. Yes. Which is smart. Yeah. Think, think about America. It's, 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 it's inclusive Canadian. because this is yeah. USA. We always say America. This is USA. This right. is not America. Exactly. Right. My parents are to Caribbean. They're part of the American Canada. I want to Spartan. say quickly, because I know, um, especially now on the topic one, this is not going to be a peaceful resolution. <laughs> so I quickly just wanted to say thank you to you guys um, for coming. I mean, we can still go for a little bit after and I'll still in there. But thank you for taking part. Yeah. I think conversation is essential.